This is the Loaded Radio Podcast. All right, hey, it's Scott Penfold back here with you for another edition of the Loaded Radio Podcast. And it's one of those special ones where we have two guests back to back. So uh, a good one for you this week. First off, we're going to be speaking to Patrick Jensen, as uh, which we are now riding high off of their latest album, Nightside, which is a concept album and available now. And man, if you like black and thrash, but I mean, with a certain darkness to it that you can only get from a band like Witchery, definitely an album you're going to want to check out. So we'll be talking to Patrick in just a few minutes. And then in the second portion of the podcast this week, like I said, uh, kind of a different one this week with the two interviews. I'm going to be speaking with Gala, who is the front man for the Mongolian folk metal band The Who, who are doing really well right now. A lot of people, of course, really jumping on the Who bandwagon with their new album Rumble of Thunder, which arrived on September the 2nd, and really a different take, a different experience when listening to heavy music with a lot of traditional Mongolian instrumentation mixed in with some, well, I guess you could call it folk metal, call it Who rock, whatever you like, but yeah, the band is certainly making an impression around the world with their unique take on heavy music. So now being the band is Mongolian, uh, Gala is going to be speaking with us via an interpreter in the second portion of the podcast. So stick around for that. That's going to be coming up. But first off, going to be talking to this guy here. He's a guitar player and founding member from the band Witchery. They are a Swedish blackened thrash metal band been around since 1997. And of course, the new album that they've got it right now is called Nightside. Patrick, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I appreciate that a lot. My pleasure. Now, let's get into Nightside. Really wanted to talk about that. Uh, now, first off, is Nightside a concept album? It is, yes. Is it built around like a theme or a story in particular? Well, um, I've been toying with the uh, idea of writing a concept album for um uh, quite a few years and uh you know what would the concept album be about and i have this um, thing for well i have i'm in bands called the haunted and we tree and stuff so it's going to be about yep. that kind of stuff yeah of course yeah so uh, <laughs> yeah so it's about uh, this um, woman that gets persecuted in europe uh, as a witch she uh, escapes uh, to the new world which is the you know the colonies the what would become the uh, americas and uh, yeah so that's kind of the story i don't want to give away the ending but th- that's what happens now uh i know that uh you worked once again with uh, producer daniel bergstrand who's worked with behemoth and in flames i wasn't working with daniel <laughs> He's a very cool guy. He's uh, he's one of the few uh, metal producers today. I feel that, uh, well, basically, I feel that a lot of uh, modern metal music is uh, very much sounds the same because everyone can do everything with uh, the the tools and the you know the the computer studios, whatever Pro Tools you or whatever you use. So yeah. everything can be tweaked to perfection. And then when everyone is perfect, then that means that everyone is average because everyone is, you know, everyone is super tight. It, all the drums uh, sound equally hard. You know, there's no surprises like there were when you bought a metal album in the 90s or 80s. Sure. Uh, Daniel is one of those guys that he's not afraid of stepping out of uh, his comfort zone or just, you know, actually recording the band, what they sound like. So uh, I really, um, I uh, like uh, Daniel's uh, fearlessness. So he's, he's, he dares to uh, kind of go where maybe other um, metal producers uh, wouldn't. So Great guy, uh, great sense, you know, he's a real producer. That's what, probably what I'm trying to say. He yeah. uh, he lets the band shine through. Uh, he doesn't go just for the technical stuff, looking that all the frequencies balance out and stuff. He, he actually wants the band to sound like their own band, so to say. Looking at some of the tracks on the album, uh, tell me about the song Storm of the Unborn. What can you tell me about that one? Well, uh, it is th- in the story the this woman has escaped uh, from uh, from England. She's on a, a, a like a sailboat to um, you know colonies, uh, and she has this the premonitions. So there's a, a storm. She has a, a dream of what uh, she's carrying a um, 
she's um, pregnant, so she has uh, like premonitions or you know, uh, like omens of what is going to become of uh, her unborn son. So um, it's a bit. That was one of the challenging things with uh, the album that I, I wanted the music to reflect what the lyrics were about. And if you're singing about someone dreaming, then it shouldn't be, you know, 250 BPMs, maybe. <laughs> it should be something that has a bit more atmosphere to it. So, sure. yeah. So, because it's kind of a dreamy and a stormy, it has more, uh, uh, it's a slower paced song. It has more air, I would call it. So, there's more room for things to, to kind of bloom and happen. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's I, I I like music that paints a picture in your head, and I think that song is uh, uh, does a pretty good job at it. Awesome, and you know a track that I, that I absolutely love that really stands out uh, would be the actual the Nightside title track. Well, uh, I'm an old metalhead, and uh, <laughs> one of my favorite bands are um, uh, Judas Priest, of course. Yep. And uh, when I was 14 or something defenders of the faith came out and uh the last song on that album is a song called heavy duty that goes into an outro which is uh well he sings rob sings uh, we are the defenders of the faith and it's a long fade and everything and i thought it was so cool to i, I like long fades at the end of an album because it, it's kind of like uh you know the party is leaving town and you you want to go with it you hear it pulling away from you but you want to i when i when there was one of those fades i always followed with my headphones i followed with a volume knob to see what was going on you know so i didn't miss anything so that is the thing uh, because it's been a big story and there's been a, like a big uh, climax i i guess you can say at the end with the yeah. lyrics so there's uh, this uh, uh slower part it's more you know things are what they are they, you know they're they can't be undone and then there's this long kind of a majestic feeling just fading out and uh, you know at least me i would i fall with the volume to to see what's going on because i don't want to i don't want the le- the circus to leave town just yet yeah so i, I it, totally get it totally get yeah. it <laughs> yeah. i'm a big album guy myself so i totally know what you're talking about right i also want to ask about how did uh, jeff walker from carcass get involved with the song forest of burning coffins uh, I also play in a band called Brujeria, and yep. uh, so it's kind of a music collective. Uh, people from different bands play with a, you know, it's a changing lineup, so to say. So if someone can't uh, play this tour, then someone else will jump in and, and do the tour. So I played with uh, Jeff on a few tours with uh, Brujeria. He's a great guy. I actually, with my very first band, I opened up, uh, our band opened up for Carcass on the Symphonies of uh, Sickness tour here in Sweden. Oh, very uh, cool. I didn't know Jeff. Yeah, I didn't know Jeff back then, but, uh, you know, now we're good friends. And, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, that uh, I wanted him to be on the album. And he said, of course, no problem. So Jeff's a great guy and he's a great singer. Uh, so he did a really good job on, on that song and I know Jeff is uh, happy with it too cool now how about Hank Sherman from Merciful Fate how did he get involved oh, I love Merciful Fate me too big fan <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah, I got to see uh, Merciful Fate at Sweden Rock Festival this year it's, oh. it started at exactly midnight too I mean it was almost oh. too- yeah so um, Don't Break the Oath is probably the best uh, album ever you know closely followed by Melissa I know some people would have it the other way around but anyway um, (laughs) Hank has been on uh, uh, doing guest solos on every album since um, Symphony for the Devil that's 22 years ago now yeah and as long as um, Hank doesn't say no I'll keep asking him for every album that we do (laughs) do you want to do a guest solo and he will always say yes I hope at least uh, and uh, yeah so Hank is going to be on every album that's just how it is that's cool so he's kind of like almost like that other member of the band that's sort of off there you know he's just, oh, he's just appears know, on the album <laughs> that really warms my heart to think of Hank as the sixth member of which <laughs> <laughs> yeah man well I mean you're working with uh, D.B. Borg your bassist uh, Victor Brandt now how's it working with him uh, great. He, I've known him for a long time. Uh, I mean, Charlie was a big part of the band, but um, uh, Arch Enemy is a very busy band. They tour all the time. And um, 
when he came home from the you know these super long tours getting back into the rehearsal place writing witchery stuff was maybe not his first uh, priority sure. uh, and which i totally understand so uh victor has been filling up for um charlie for many years uh so um victor's been familiar with all our songs he's uh, a great uh, um songwriter also he's great on stage he's a great guy uh so there was i mean we're very happy that we got victor in the band so actually it, it might be even better for witchery to have victor in the band because he is uh more available he uh you know so there might be a new album in, you know in the near future also sure, because yeah. of victor being uh, a songwriter you did mention earlier uh the haunted uh, are you still involved with the haunted what's going on with those guys right now of course yeah yeah we've uh i mean we've uh there should have been an album out since you know three years ago or something right. but uh, <laughs> me and ola uh, we have uh seven songs each uh ready to go but we just need jonas to write a few we need we need that gothenburg melodic stuff in there so sure. or else it's not a, a haunted album so but he's the only guy that writes anything in um in at the gates these days now that uh, anders left a few years ago so right. he uh you know big burden on his shoulders keeping that band you know uh with uh, material but one of these days jonas is going to get around to writing a few riffs i hope that's great news too man now are most of the members of witchery also playing in other projects well it's me and victor and then uh with the singer angus he has his uh other band a black metal band called Net Necrocraft. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Chris has uh, Leak, of course, uh, the, you know, the go uh, Sunlight Studio sound, the, you know, Entomb Dismember sound. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th those are the bands. Now, um, getting into you personally, Patrick, like, what, just to ask you, what, what are your three favorite extreme metal albums that you would recommend to somebody who's just getting into the genre? Uh, Dark Angel, Darkness Ascends has to be in there uh, i think that probably i mean it came did it maybe 87 or something 86 yeah uh it it's I, I think it's still considered pretty extreme it's a great album uh absolutely love that album um so great. that's one okay uh, uh celtic frost uh, to megatherium is another one uh everyone should check that out that i think that was when the band was in their prime this uh, songs uh, the production sounds fresh still today the songs there's no one that can really sound like them such a great band nice. and um uh so i'm going to go totally old school now so the third one's also going to be old school and that's going to be uh destruction infernal overkill nice that also has some strange atmosphere it, you put it on and you're you know it's you're just there i don't know it, there's something about that album all those three albums have that same kind of atmosphere. It's just everything clicked. They, everything fell into place. That's so perfect. I would, yeah, I would recommend those three. That's awesome, Patrick. Um, now, just what's coming up in the immediate future for Witchery? Obviously, you going to be on the road for a bit. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, because of the pandemic and the you know there's there are uh, lifted restrictions. So there's a, a lot of bigger bands that are just you know been waiting forever to to. Uh, get to touring and there's actually less places to to play because a lot of them went belly up during the pandemic sure. so yeah. it's pretty hard to um to uh to get a tour right now yeah but uh that will hopefully change you know even next year or so uh it's actually pretty hard to find um crew for touring at the moment because hmm. people have just found new jobs so it's really hard to find backline techs there's uh, tour buses if you need them, but there's there's no drivers because they've also found new jobs. So mm -hmm. it's pretty uh, uh, tough situation if you want to tour at the moment. Thank you so much, Patrick. I, I really appreciate your time. It's been great talking to you. Great to finally connect with you, man. This is, it's been great. My, all right, cool. <laughs> all, all right. All the best. Take care. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.
There he is. That is Patrick Jensen from the band Witchery. And the new album Nightside is out now. Definitely worth a listen if you dig extreme metal, if you dig Swedish black and thrash. It's definitely your stuff, man. Uh, but I'm Scott Penfold. And in this portion of the podcast, we generally get together with Johnny Rude from Motor Radio and discuss the week that was in hard rock and metal. However, it's a special one this week. And we are now being joined by the Who frontman Gala, who is joining us with an interpreter as the band are Mongolian, but making a serious impression worldwide with their latest album especially rumble of thunder but gala thank you so much for joining us here on the load radio podcast this week yeah how are you good gala how are things with you sir very good nice to see you yes it's great to have you uh, on the show today as well man i love the band i'm a really big fan and rumble of thunder i think it's a fantastic album Thank you so much. No, not a problem at all. Um, now, before we get into discussing the album, um, let's just, for those people who have not heard of the band before, how did the band come together initially? Uh, and that's a very good question. Um, the band was formed in 2016 by um, by um, Dashka, uh, our producer Dashka, who has um, selected uh, selected us um, in, into his um, you know a project that he had in mind for over a decade. And um, after you know doing your research and, and um, you know a lot of reading, he came up with this idea, and um, he basically you know selected us to do this um to do the who new rock excellent okay and uh, why did the band settle on the name the who so the word who is actually the root of a human um, in Mongolian and it as in English as well. So um, when we talk about children, women, um, men, and um, a human a person who has an, a hu- human who um, st- started having intellect, you know, um, discovering fire and everything, um, th- th- then on we started calling them human. And so uh, based on that, those um, words, um, we call, uh, call ourselves the who. Why the human is important in our um, in our Hunurak is that who we wanted to touch the heart of um, every human um, human on this earth. So that's why we call ourselves uh, the uh, the who, and the and uh, it came from the root of a word human now uh getting into rumble of thunder tell me about the song this is mongol the melody of the uh, this is mongol is, is very energetic and um you know gives you a vibe of like strength to make yourself with um yourself it's almost serves as an explanation of where the mongols can actually mongols has that kind of energy where it's where we have a great taste of music so this is mongol is almost like a declaration that you know we are here um on the face of this earth and we actually have this characteristics of respecting your elders and loving your uh, loving uh, your environment and um we have this characteristic of energy and strength and power like inner power so the lyrics actually does say all of these words and um yeah we were this this is mongol is uh you know talk uh, just um it's like a declaration that saying the mongols are still here and on, on this uh, on the modern world Tell me about the song Black Thunder. Um, so Black Thunder is uh, the crown jewel of the Rumble of Thunder album. And as you can uh, already uh, listen, um, there is a one the four minute version and there's another nine minute version of it. And um, you can, we also uh, recorded a um, two part video into it. And the video production was huge because you know, that's how um, how we think of the of that song um, when we first created and recorded it um, it was this enormous idea of explaining about the history um, of this specific person by you know using his his life um, his life as as the message that we're trying to deliver about the Mongolian men um, and how they used to be and how they 
live um, as of today as well. The, the Zayani Danjila, who we sing about on the Black Thunder, was an actual person who has uh, fought and lived in you know history of um, Malasand. He has he's been the most loyal and you know powerful men. And uh, we uh, you know as a children we used to look up to a lot of warriors of our histories. And um, he's a, a absolutely one of the noteworthy um, person um, of our history books. And uh, the, also, like the reason that we the reason why we sing about like the Mongolian men and Mongolian warriors is that there are, you know so many people are first of all so many people are interested in into the history of Mongols and we wanted to share what we you, you know what we look up to and who we look up to and we wanted to share like how they acted and lived and like how we can always learn from the history. So through our lyrics, we try to do that and um, try to like teach a lesson or try to like, you know, anyone who's li- willing to listen or, or, and learn. Uh, now, what is the band's songwriting process? The so, so songwriting process and uh, melody, um, so 100% um, producer Dashka makes it, but obviously as a performer and musicians, we add our techniques into it and we you know, talk and discuss about like how it should sound, how it should sound and how, how, how can it, you know, what was, uh, what was successful and what was not. And like as a group, we listen to it and discuss about it. Um, and then usually, usually just uh, after the results, you can hear hear the results that the songwriting process are like are involved by all of the groups uh, groups as well. Does the band embrace the folk metal label? Because our tuning is different, because we, you know, producer Tashka made the tuning like out of scratch, and we use those instruments, even though we're using the traditional and classical instrument together. We call ourselves Hunurak, but not so much of uh, the folk metal. Um, so the most traditional instruments that we use is the horse fiddle, uh, the Mongolian um, guitar, and and um, the wind instruments, and we use like f- we use five traditional instruments and um, three um, modern rock instruments. Uh, finally, where did the idea for integrating throat singing into heavy rock music come about? So in the thrash metal and um, heavy rock, the the main singer usually like uses a technique to um, uh, change his voice and like sing, and it almost sounds like you know he's screaming. But he they, they in order to not use their vocal cords, they they actually have a technique that they use. Um, so as for homey throat singing, we also use a throat a throat singing, and traditionally. The throat singing um, has like two types, and like one of the main types goes really well to the heavy rock metal. Um, and you know, obviously, that was discovered by uh, producer Dashka. Um, he is from a region. His family is from a region where the throat singing is um, is uh, very popular, and they're known for it uh, by like the, because they're in a high altitude mountains. That's what they used to imitate the um, uh, predators and um, also like animals uh, around the area. So they're they're known for their throat singing. So he has a rich like you know knowledge of of the throat singing itself, and that is why um, as 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 he was producing all of it, the, the throat singing had to be one of the main components, like main elements of the Hunurak genre. Um, so that is why that is how we uh, uh, you know um, involved the throat singing into the rock music it was like right fit thank you so much Salongo and Gala for your time today it's been wonderful speaking with you you as well and thank you so much for no worries at all thanks and take care and all the best okay you as well okay bye
All right, there you go. And don't forget the new album from The Who is called Rumble of Thunder. It's available now, and it is a great, it's very, very cool stuff, man. And a great take on a Mongolian instrumentation, rather traditional Mongolian instrumentation with some serious heavy music. All right, but hey, I'm Scott Penfold. Don't forget to check out LoaderRadio.com for all your hard rock and metal news constantly updated for you as well. You can get all that via the Loaded Radio app, completely free and available to download wherever you get your apps or via LoadedRadio.com. There you can catch past podcasts, the 24-hour radio station, all your hard rock and metal news, like I said, plus tons more, okay? But that's going to do it for me this week for another edition of the Loaded Radio podcast. I am Scott Penfold, and we'll talk to you again next week right here on Loaded Radio. Loaded Radio.